time to get going. A hill start at Spa, where it's lights out and away we go. And Hamilton gets an absolute flyer from second on the grid. Here's Hamilton. There's a fire at the back of that Mercedes car. His engine has blown and his chances of winning the Malaysia Grand Prix with it. Oh, no. Hello, one and all, and welcome to the Unplanned Pit Stop for another episode. My name is Hamish. I'm Josh. And I'm Jordan. And welcome back, lads. We've uh, obviously, uh, listeners may have noticed, we, we like the F1 teams to have a bit of a mid-season break, um, partially enforced by Josh's radical weight loss routine. Um, how do you feel being the new you and four teeth lighter? Yeah, hey, it's, you know, it makes all the difference. Back on solid food now, which is a joy. So Graham posts uh, are something to behold. You're like a new a new man. I am a new man, Just you know. There's a new body of yours. The befores and afters. <laughs> you know how I got these scars? <laughs> yeah. Lucky you can't see them. Um, I've, got a great, I've got a great, great screenshot that we can put on our socials if you want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of the old face. Do you, do you feel refreshed um, from your mid-season? At this exact moment in time, do you feel refreshed? No. Yeah, I knew that. I thought that would be the case. <laughs> <laughs> but F1 um, is back this week. Yeah, excited. We are, we are going to give everyone a mid-season review to start off with. So let's jump jump straight in. How are we doing? So we're gonna, should we count backwards? Have you got a in, Have you got a plan? I've got a plan. If, the, if okay. you can believe that, Josh, I do actually have a plan. And in <laughs> um, unplanned pit stop tradition, we're going to go from bottom to top. I like that. And I am, for the first time, it's thoroughly enjoyable for me to this, do this. Is this the very first time um, it hasn't opened with you? Yes. Yes, it has. <laughs> I've, got, I've got two teams to think about what I want to say, uh, to wax lyrical for an hour. Um, so first up is Haas uh, on zero points. We've got their two drivers, Mick Schumacher, uh, zero points, and Nikita Mazepin also on zero uh, Schumacher is in 19th uh, due to the better uh, the better finishing uh, position. So Jordan, let uh, we'll go to you first. What um, what are your thoughts on Haas um, so far? And give us something on on both the drivers as well. Um, oh, well, I'll start with the negatives because I feel they definitely outweigh the positives. So I would say that Schumacher has been very good for them as a in that car like undoubtedly the toughest car to drive on the grid and he's still you know occasionally getting out of q3 uh, q1 sorry um and you know doing bits that mazepin has not been able to to do um and mazepin it has i i thought it was going to be better than schumacher which was a bit audacious but um like, how is it, like, it's just it just keeps going wrong for Haas. Like, when you think they've hit rock bottom, it's just like you ain't seen nothing yet. Like, oh, wait, there's more. They can go lower. Um, I don't see a shining light in the moment, to be honest. Do you think, do, would you not say that Mick has been a, a shining light? Now, obviously, we know that he's not going to be at Haas for a long time. You know, you'd imagine even like going to Alpha is a Alpha Romeo is a step up for him. Do you, would you would you say he's enough of a shining light? Well, yeah, he has because he he's definitely been a shining light. But I just think you know, as a team, um, they're not going forward as much as they would like. Like Schumacher is going to leave them. They're not, they're not, and it's going to be hard for them to pick someone else up that's to then get them some points because at this stage they don't look like any points in any race um yeah but you so. gotta th- but you gotta think there's a little bit of that they had accepted that this season would be a write-off like yeah, they, 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 they'd openly said that they weren't going to develop they weren't going to do much so <clears throat> in a car that was already struggling you know last year it was the second worst car on the grid and to not develop at all or spend any money doing it with two rookie drivers. I wouldn't say where they are is totally unexpected. I would say in the pros column, they've certainly had a more settled driver lineup this year. 
Yeah, that they don't well, have Grosjean and fucking Magnussen crashing into one another all the time. I think that helps, but it's yeah, like it's a tough season for them. It's a tough yeah, season for them have, when they're they trying have, to get their spot in the sport. They had the they had the excuse, as you guys have said, like the two rookie drivers. They made all the right noises at the start of the year to say that we're all about twenty two. This year's a, a waste for us. So they like there's kind of almost no um, kind of punishment for these the results because if they come last and they get a point, we said this at the start of the year. Look, this is exactly yeah. what we thought this was going to happen. Is, this is a part of the plan. Yeah, yeah. Like it, it, and then they just put all their eggs on the twenty two basket. And and for any of us, is Haas in a position that you didn't think they would be in? No, like is this, a, think, this doesn't surprise we, anyone? I think we said that Haas was going to come last, didn't we? We did, yeah. yeah. I think almost unanimously. It's, yeah, a lot of it, it's thoroughly satisfying looking at the constructors because it follows a lot of what we said. It's just kind of a we've, nice little we've pat actually on the back of reality. Pretty, yeah, we've actually <laughs> sounded pretty smart in the yeah, season. Yeah, it's almost like we know what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Almost. Look Everyone's at us. Who'd have thought it, huh? Who'd have thought me. it? Not me. Not, Not me. me. Look, Schumacher's good. He'll go on to bigger and better things. He's, he has been there shining light. Yeah, he's had I some good drives. Impressed. He's had some good drives in there. Maze pin, like our thoughts on him are fucking well known. Is he an F one driver to you? Standard, well, like. Well, it doesn't well, matter. His dad's signing the checks. Same no, as Lee, but if you like, you take out that he's bought his spot. Does he have the talent to be there? Does he have the talent That's to be what driving? I mean. Latifi to- has proven he can drive for me. Yeah, I think Latifi can drive. And I think there is a certain amount of like throwing two rookies into a car that's number one, not being developed, and number two, obviously had like has had some has had some issues for the last two years. Like a car that has been quite yeah. challenging to drive. Did they, you know, have they kind of pushed these kids a little bit into too far game. into the into the fire? Like, don't get me wrong, like does Mayspin deserve to be there is another com- is another conversation. But do, like, was it the right decision to bring in a rookie driver who's never driven in F1, who's, you know, questionable ability and put him into a car that's going to struggle so much? To me on that, it's the difference between, because Latifi in his first year was slow, but there wasn't the spins. Like, yeah, and it's I, the obviously spins. Nikita's, he's slowed down on the spins, but it's the, like, it's, if he continues spinning the car, that's different from being slow. That's that's a driving talent of these cars, like of the level of these cars to me. But let's let's move on to Alfa Romeo, another Ferrari powered engine. One um, only one thing I have on Haas before, before Gunter. Yeah. How like give me oh, how you long know, is he last? Gunter's a good Gunter's no. a good friend of the pod. We love him. You know, he calls us he every week, Gunter. lets us know. But what does this do for his legacy like for his look for me, I think oh yeah you go home uh, to me he's um, basically the excuse is already done and I don't think Hart, like that team is Gunter Steiner it should be called Steiner F1 team it's like they don't invest if like Gunter Steiner forces it like gets Haas and Papa Mayspin invested so I while it's not ideal I think he survives. Do you think he got the money though? Or was it Gene Haas that got that money from the, you know, the Russian mafia? I I feel for for myself, he's got this year um, and he better have a very intricate and precise plan of how he's going to make them better next year. Because the the problem with putting all your eggs in the 2022 basket is if 2022 if, stays the same. Like if it's another yeah. shit fight and he's gone, oh, things are going to get better next year, you go, well. Oh, uh, yeah. Which is why I think he's. I think he gets that shot next year. Yeah. I think he gets two next year. And then, as you said, if things don't look like they're going up, then, then he's in danger. He's in real danger. Josh, Alfa Romeo. Ninth spot in with three points. Kimi's got two, and Giovinazzi, future Ferrari world champion, has one. So they occupy 17th and 18th in the driver's standings. Give us your thoughts on Alpha and Kimi and Antonio. I think they've been one of the teams that has probably gone further 
backwards than we thought. Like last year they were on for a, a little bit more racing, it seemed, this year, whereas now this year they're certainly a backmarker. Like undoubtedly they are a backmarker team. In a few, you know, we've had quite a few red flags this season and some races with very limited finishes, you know, with only 13, 14 finishes. And that obviously makes it a little bit easier for points to get it when you've got kind of that that three, those three teams of six drivers who aren't likely to be crashing out and are all fighting. So they haven't got as many points. I thought, honestly, to be like a, I thought they would be in the kind of Williams position of 10 points and Williams would be on the three or four points. So, like, I don't know. It seems like they've gone backwards. Giovinazzi hasn't really kicked on. Raikkonen's just treading water while he decides what he wants to do with the rest of his life. I think, again, like we said, you know, they're a team that don't really know what they are at the moment. Are they a feeder team? Are they a team in their own right? They haven't really cemented that spot to be at. Like if they're a Ferrari Philip affiliated team, they should be a, they should be getting more support to push up into that kind of Alpha Tori, Aston Martin yeah. range. They they're not, they're going have, backwards. They probably also should, should have got Mick Schumacher then. Yeah. Like that was the switch we all thought. I think we all thought and a lot of the F1 world thought that that, that, that makes sense. It, that makes sense. Program. Yeah. And they'd missed out on him. So yeah, I think they're an interesting one to see what's going on with them and yeah. where they go from here. Do you feel like Kimmy is do you think this will be the, his last season? He seems to say disinterested, I think would be generous. Yeah. Well, I don't know. He's such a name and he's a good person to have for the team, I think. I think he's a good name to keep. But, again, until they can figure out what they are and where they're going, what's the yeah. – like, I, I don't know where they think they're going as a team. The And Ferrari's been able to turn it around. You know, Ferrari have turned it around from the dumpster fire last year. So, obviously, they've figured out some of the issues with the engine. You would think being a feeder team, they would have a little bit more support, but apparently not. So at the yeah. end of the last year, they were kind of like in that twelfth, eleventh position. Yeah, yeah, like they weren't too or, far off the pace. But anything you want to add on uh, Alfa Romeo, Jordan? Or I think Josh covered it off quite nicely. Um, hmm. I sort of predicted them to fall, but as Josh said, definitely not as far as they did. Um, I still feel this could be the writing on the wall for Kimi in a, in a sense, like this is the one year where he hasn't proven that we're all fucking idiots essentially. Um, but I guess a lot of that comes down to the car for him. Um, and I don't think he'd be enjoying it too much anymore. Like, is he actually liking formula one anymore? Yeah, that's very true. Coming around, just basically filling his laps in. You're absolutely right. Um, so on to eighth position. I've got a nosebleed. It's the altitude up here. Don't know what it's like. <laughs> the promised land. <laughs> it's Williams. Can you believe that? On 10 points, we've got uh, Latifi on six points in 15th position and Georgie, my boy Russell, on four points, 16th position. I think this can be summarized very, very succinctly for me which is that this season has already been a success. We've scored even – it could have been one and two points. It could have been one point, but we've scored a point. So that is, in terms of a building block, is, yeah, that's a that's a success for us. I think it's interesting kind of for me, like, where, where my perspective's going. I'm now more and more invested in Latifi and what – and seeing him progress because – even if Russell somehow somehow doesn't go to Mercedes this like next year, he'll go the next. Like it's only a matter of time. It's not. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna he's gonna leave. So now I'm like when now not I'm, if. Oh, absolutely. So now I'm interested in Latifi showing these signs of improvement. Now I, I think he has. Possibly that's been helped by what we've discussed earlier: the Haas and Alfa Romeo going down. And hey. Like some of the uh, you know drivers we've been linked with, pop, pa, mostly us linking them, like Bottas <laughs> and Hulkenberg. Like you take any of those names coming in, but yeah, I think 
the scoring of points, which should be such a massive boost for the team. And as we said, like on the pod, you saw what it meant to George, who's basically been there since, since we scored a point last, you know, like he was outdone by Giga Kibitza one nil. Um, <laughs> so he, he knows what's gone into that, but yeah, for me, successful season already. I, and I, and I, I just want to, I hope Latifi keeps building on this and, Kind of because obviously last year was his first year and a bit of a tough start. So, but yeah, any anything you guys want to add on that? Um, I think it's like it's going to be quite funny when you know we're already you know third from the bottom and we're saying it's the first success of the season. Mm-hmm. When I think there's still a few more failures to come up like further up the ladder. Um, so yeah, as you said. You've got points, and I don't think it'll be your last points, if I'm completely honest. Yeah. I feel, you know, you're just doing those right things. They're both seeming to be able to, you know, still have the car on the track when Josh was talking about last time, you know, when there's only 14 cars, you know, finishing the race. So, and I don't think Williams was ever really there, even if that was to happen last year, mm. um, you know, because there was chances in – in the rain and, and, and stuff like yeah. that. And you, you did manage to capitalize on those, but this time you have. So that's, that's experience, right? Like mm. George and Latifi are getting more and more experienced, more and more used to the Cool car. heads, cool heads under yeah, pressure. Exactly right. Exactly right. Um, and I, th- I think, you know, we're, we're all going to be slightly blinded by Latifi's progress because he's got the points. Uh, and he's yeah. outscoring George. Like, no offense on the sticking in your heart there, Hamish, but um, so just pick that out. <laughs> yeah, just real friends. Real, real, real friends. Real friends stab you from the front, mate. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and I think he has improved, but he's not obviously. He's, he's not, not nowhere near on the level of George yet. Yes, but I think correct. he has. I think he has improved leaps and bounds, though. Compared to last he's year, in, I think yeah, I think he has improved absolutely. Without a doubt, he's there, and it's been a shining light. You've now got two drivers who are, you know, we've we've always harped on about George, but you've now got Latifi, who's while probably not up to George's standard, he's not too far behind. He's not yeah. too far off. He's you know they're working together as a team. The team seems to be coming together nicely. I think for Latifi, if he can start getting into Q two. Like yeah. just little things like that. It doesn't have to. He doesn't have to score point necessarily. Score points again. Like Russell, I think is the best shot at scoring more points this year. But if Latifi can just start, like Russell, you know, he just started qualifying in Q two a bit more regularly. Like yeah. it's just little things like that that just shows a, a upward trajectory. Yep. Some just some stonks. That's uh, that's all we need. That's all we want to see. Do you think? I have a question for you though. Hey. Do you lay think? It on, lay it on me. <laughs> do you think the change in management? has had a bit to do with their success. The change in Ooh, the that's a good question. In the William like, you know, in the Williams family stepping back and selling it off. Do you think that's had a bit to do with their change in fortunes this year? It's an interesting one. It's hard I'm and I'm not gonna sit on the fence on it, but I'm gonna kind of preface things that it, obviously it's hard to to say um exactly um like the influence that has had. But if you look at it kind of how I'm looking at it, you look at who they've moved, like they've obviously brought some more people in. Were people in there before under the old regime, like under the Williams family, you know, would they have necessarily been moved on or people come in if they'd have stayed? Maybe not. So I think you've got, I think, yes, to be honest, I think that has made a, made a difference. Maybe it's put a bit of a rocket up some people who, or they've, you know, it's maybe not the, the Williams family weren't running it as a business, but when like at the end of the day, capital investment for like funds are not there to piss about like, oh, I love racing. It's we're in here to make money. Yep. And we're success is things. success is di- directly proportional to the amount of money you make. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Like whereas the Williams family are in it because they loved it. Yeah. So yeah. I, th- okay. I think yes. Fundamentally. Okay. I, it was just a just a spitballing question, though. And I just thought <laughs> Frank Williams can't roll over here and uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah it can't anyway. No, <laughs> no. So, um, it's a it's a good point you mentioned on that because I feel that ha- the new ownership. Have you guys even like read anything or seen anything or 
You know, like I can't even tell you who your fucking principal is at the moment. No, no, I wouldn't. I couldn't tell you either. Like I, I never, him. I never see the shots of like they did bring you know, in that they brought the, in the Mercedes the, the, technical director a while right. back. One of them to be a technical director of it, which I think it makes a big difference. I just don't see them on the pit wall. You know, they don't get the pit wall shots, and I don't see you know like a post race uh, interview with Claire or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, I think it's because because Claire was under pressure so much. That was the pro- like. She was under pressure because, because of like the poor results. The I think that's why she got more attention. Whereas, yeah, now I mean, yeah, yeah, I couldn't I couldn't tell you who the team principal is either. But maybe that's a good thing. They're just getting their head down and getting it done, as opposed to having a chin wag. So moving on to uh, one of the the failures that you mentioned, Jordan. Uh, per, my personal opinion. Aston Martin Racing on is in seventh spot, forty-eight points. Uh, Baby Stroll do 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 has eighteen points and is in fourteenth. And then Seb Seb Vettel not honouring the terms of his contract is on thirty points and on in twelfth position. Jordan, let him rip potato chip. What do you reckon? So I come off the back fence. Uh, about like, our favorite, our favorite. What, what, did, what did Kimmy say? I don't know. Force India, Racing Point, Sport. Yeah, paper, Force uh, India, whatever the fuck they call. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, this is a. This is one of, of. For me personally, this is one of the biggest declines. Mm. I feel in the like I'm, Alpha Alpha Romeo is up there, um, but I, I mean. Proportionally, it's almost got to be the biggest. I'd yeah, like, yeah. Pro- proportionally, yeah. I'd say it's the biggest. Alfa Romeo, while they've declined, they've dropped a spot from where we thought they <laughs> might be. Aston yeah. Martin have dropped, like we thought, you know, we they would be fourth third in that fourth third, like, for fifth. Yeah, or well, like from from fifth up. Yeah, and they're in seventh, and by a twenty points, by twenty six. points, by a def- definitive margin as well, and they're off the back of mainly two Vettel third places. Well, one third place. <coughs> one DNF. Uh, one D, DNF. D, uh, one dis, uh, one disqualification. <laughs> one yeah. DQ, baby. DQ, baby. Well, yeah, what are you, sorry, uh, Jordan interrupted you, but there, what, are you, what are your thoughts on? Um, well, Lance Stroll, where do you even fucking start with him? Um, not improved at all. Probably the least inspiring driver on the grid for me this year. Um, you know, it was always quite painful in seasons past where he's actually seemed to do something and we have to give yeah. him a bit of credit. It's um, been relatively annoying how successful he's been. Yeah, correct. Previously. Yeah, in seasons past, it's uh, not been ideal uh, for a anti Lance Stroll fan, but um, he he's obviously – was supposed to be the biggest and best thing according to his dad, you know what I mean? And, you know, we, everyone's going to say, like everyone was saying that Lance was going to beat Seb, but, you know. I think because he was contract precision, defined, as we Yeah, exactly. Precision beats power every time, as they say. So <laughs> um, I feel, yeah, Seb, Seb's been, I think he's, he's a success story for himself. Um. And I, I'm not as anti Seb Vettel as as our good friend Josh. Um, I mean, Josh has got a picture, a pillow of him. He goes to sleep with Seb every night, <laughs> to clutch, to his, clutch to his bosom. It's his happy <laughs> pillow. Well, you would have to say from Vettel's perspective, it has been a bit of a revitalization. Like it, mm. yeah. we questioned it at the start, but he's shown some some of that old wily that you know f1 veteran that we expect from people like him from people like he's, yeah he's Alonso. moving into his Alonso years yeah he's moving into his Alonso right. years in that wily old veteran and we you know he's wrangled the car into th- two podium finishes yes one was disqualified but he still wrangled that car to a third place finish cuz also so, just quickly in there I th- that changes if he gets if he doesn't get disqualified there he is a monumental success so far this season I think, like, I, it shows I, you how we've talked about this with other drivers, but yeah, yes, I, I think personally that makes him a monumental success. The 
the disqualification I don't think was attributed to him. I think there was more some team mismanagement, which tells you, you know, I think there's a bit going on there behind the scenes, but I think you got to take that. He finished third from a personal perspective. He still finished third and wrangled that car through a long and grueling race, Hmm. held off some people, you know, it's like absolute success, absolute revitalization. And, you know, we were, we were talking last year, will he retire? Like, is it, you know, when he didn't have a driver, like, does he pack it in? Has he had enough? And he's just kind of bounced back. Can I ask you something, Josh? No, oh, of course, mate. Is your, is your lovely partner uh, sitting in the next room? Are you trying to win some brownie no, points no. by swinging off Seb like this? No, no, yeah, no. Really, our character. Someone's <laughs> getting lucky tonight. <laughs> hey, you know, get out the happy just, pillow. <laughs> get out the happy pillow. But look, you've just got to, you've got to take it as they go. You know, uh, far be it from me, I call a spade a spade. Right? And I call you a cunt. Yeah, and there you go. So, um, yeah. Speaking of Gunter, though, being in trouble, do, you, do we see some pressure being applied to Otmar, the strangely named American-accented uh, Austrian or <laughs> Austrian, wherever he's yeah. from? <laughs> uh, I think he is in some hot water. Uh, I think you could see from the last drive to survive the fear that he had around, you know, Lauren Stroll. Um, so, yeah, I would say that he he's up there. He's he looks like up. a man who's promised someone the world and knows he mm. can't deliver it. Yeah. He's like, I lied through my fucking teeth to you and now I'm out of ideas about how to bring that to fruition. <laughs> I, think, I think, and I'm sure we'll talk about it, there's been some undoings in the Aston Martin-Mercedes relationship, which has led to the car probably going backwards, you know, being found that they're not allowed to use just old parts from the Mercedes probably didn't help. But I think that their entire development strategy probably relied on a bit of them being able to co-opt certain bits and their entire strategy has come undone a little bit. And that's, you know, seen their marked return to form in where we think they should be. Also, do you feel as though, now this is obviously, I think I know the answer, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Do you ever see a scenario where Lance Stroll gets punted? Like, does he's because his dad's obviously pumping serious money into that. Now, there's you know, there's an amount of money that is when you're a billionaire, I assume, not being a billionaire, there's an amount of money that you can go, <laughs> yes, I can live with this. I can, yeah, you know, my son wants to be an F1 driver. Maybe he like is kind of like basically good enough, but possibly, you know, if it guarantees him a seat, cool. Like, I'm happy with that. Then you get to like another level of money, which is fucking hell. Like I can't keep putting this money in if my son's the one weighing the team down. Do you ever yeah, think we'll the hit team that would point? be giving him some dirty looks? I reckon. <laughs> no. Do you ever think we get the hit the point where Lance doesn't race for a Lawrence Stroll owned team? I think he was. He was supposed to be going to Mercedes, wasn't he? There's, there's too much. Yeah, there's too much opportunity. Georgia spot, you know it. (laughs) I think there's too much opportunity for someone like him and his father. That if he, he's not going to get like Lawrence continues to own the team, but his son does not drive for it. Does that ever happen? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so. Otherwise, that's going to be an awkward Christmas lunch. It makes a very difficult Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry, son. I'm just going to go uh, check in on the development team. I will not tell you how they're going. Cause yeah, it exactly. Come with you. No, you cannot come with me. <laughs> <laughs> but, Dad. <laughs> so, moving on to it, uh, possibly, I, I'm going to go out on a limb and say possibly Josh's second favourite team, which is, so it's apt that he gets to give his first opinion on them. Alpha Tori are coming in sixth on 68 points. They certainly are. Your, your second favourite driver, Pierre Gasly, has 50 points and he's coming in eighth. And Sonoda has the same number of points as uh, Lance Stroll, but he's in 13th due to finishes. So he's got 18 points. Josh, give us the lowdown on Alpha Tori. Well, your team. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, you would have evicted you from the McLaren house. I've been evicted. Well, you would say... The torch is a bit extinguished. <laughs> you would say that... They're probably about where we expected them to be, if not probably a little bit higher, being carried by 
Gasly. Sonoda's, ta- Sonoda's performed well kind of in the last, started to kick on a little bit in the last bit of the season, but had a very tough start to start to the year. And I think that weighs them down a little bit, certainly. But, you know, I wouldn't call it a, a dismal season. I would say they're probably performing up to expectations. Re- like realistically, how much better did we see them doing compared to, you know, other than in, if anything, they're probably in front of where we thought they would be without Aston Martin dropping so severely. Yeah, I think I think they've maintained the level from last year. They just they don't have that Pierre Gasly second result that really like pushed them up. Mm. They're those like Pierre Gasly podiums that really yeah. They, Pierre Gasly wins. Like they've, 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 played, they've missed yeah. out they've some of those their numbers from last year. Yeah, so now but, they're running off Gasly sixths and Gasly sevenths, but which is still not. commendable, which is still very good. But yeah, and Absolutely. then so, Sonoda's probably had in that car. Sonoda's had too many no points finishes for what? But it's still his first season. I think still his first season. Like he gets but he away with that. He does get away with it, but you would think he should be performing like. And we saw it in the kind of middle end of the first half of the season. He was getting those ninths and tenths, yeah. which is where. You know, he should be just be ticking it over ones and twos. Like, if he can, if he can do that every week, I think that's a successful year. That's for a him. success. Like, yeah, Alpatori, they, they know that all their eggs are in the Gasly basket for like big points hauls. Yeah, but if you if you can keep getting nights and tens, yeah, and go from there. Well, you wouldn't complain. They're sitting in sixth. Not a yeah, bad they're, place to be. Um, nine points off Alpine, so. If fifth is in theory their highest position they could finish. Position anyway. they, yeah, that's the that's the fight they're in between fifth and sixth and seventh. And that's kind out, of that's an Alpine with a race win. Yeah. So again, yeah. Like, yeah. Any any thoughts there, Jordan? Anything you'd like to add? Um, not particularly. Um, I think Gasly is shown that he's you know he's phenomenal. He's a great driver. Um, I am shocked at how well he's done post Red Bull. Um, and I'm not a big fan of Sonoda as such. Like, is a I don't enjoy the way he sort of carries on as a as a rookie. Um, there were some teething issues at the start guys, with how he carried on. He's, he's still carry still carrying on though. That's the thing. Yeah, and I just feel like in your rookie year, like. You, d- you didn't see that from Charles. You didn't see that from Gasly. You didn't see that from a bit more. Lamb. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Three bags full, sir. Yes, mm. correct. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, they. I think they would be relatively pleased. Um, but I think they'll want they'll want to um, you know try and be pushing more for that that fourth fifth position there. Yeah, absolutely. Speaking of the team that they're in battle with, it is Alpine uh, on 77 points. Um, Ocon has 39 points and Alonso has 38. So they occupy 10th and 11th respectively. Um, it's a it's a funny one, Alpine. I'm, I'm not, I think kind of what we were saying a little bit with uh, Alpha Tori, I think they were they're probably inflated a little bit. By Ocon's win, certainly I helps. I feel like they've been the so one twenty-five of, points. Certainly helps. Most, yeah, especially when you're talking in terms of like seventy-seven. Yeah, it's a third of their points in one in one weekend. And Alonso got fourth or something, didn't he? So yeah, yeah great that's, hall. Hey, great hall. Look, not that there's anything wrong with getting all your points in one race. I will say that. <laughs> I need to. I need to put that out there. It's a very valid strategy if it's available to you, but. To me, they've been probably the most inconsistent team on the grid so far. It's very hard to know what Alpha, uh, what Alpine is going to show up. They're probably, I feel like if they'd have been in sixth and Alpha Tori had been in fifth, I think that probably would have been maybe a bit more reflection of the consistency. But, but yeah, that's part of F1. That's how it, these things go. Yeah. Um, again, like Alonso probably hasn't. Uh, done as well as I expected, truth be told. I thought he would qualify himself into better positions. Um, and Ocon, again, it's he's like, he's bipolar. One week he's yeah. 17 and the next week he's fifth. Like, Ocon's it doesn't make any sense. Ocon's the one you're just like, 
he should be more consistent. He's been in the spot, you know, he's had enough runs now. He's yeah. been in the car for a while. He just seems that they're very inconsistent, Alpine. It's just, yeah. and it's, you just can't put your finger on it. What's he'd be, he'd be a nightmare if on. he was your partner. Like you'd, you'd come home from work and it's like, God, what mood is this guy going to be in? Am I going to get beaten or am I going to get some loving? Like you just, yeah. you wouldn't know. You don't know. He'd be in constant state of turmoil. Um, but yeah, I mean, do I think they'll stay in fifth? No, I think for some reason, I even think Aston Martin had overhaul them. They're the ones I'm least, I've got the least faith in. Alpine to hold that position. Jordan, you want to do you want to have a, a word or seventeen hundred on your your fav, second favorite driver Alonso? Um, I think he's had one good race this year. Yeah, I don't I don't see him as the the prodigal return as you know the return of the king reception was lived up to. Um. He he obviously got the driver of the day that race as well because of his defending on Lewis. No um, and it was, don't get me wrong, that was fucking phenomenal driving. Um, but I just feel that he hasn't um, lived up to that. The what, what do you keep calling them? The Riley old fucking... Wiley old uh, veteran? The Wiley yeah, old veteran? He's, yeah. He's not, he's not doing much of that for me. And he's not made it to the Kimmy, the Kimmy level of like just flogging um, an absolute billy cart into eighth. Yeah, like yeah by, correct. By just the sheer strength by of will, sheer fucking will. Yeah, <laughs> the, the sheer amount of fuck you, I'll prove you wrong. Yeah, yes, I, I heard what Jordan said on the up. Yeah, stop. exactly. Um, <laughs> but I. Uh, <sighs> I'm a little bit different on Ocon than you guys. I think he's been their best driver and yes, okay, he won a race and that's always going to help the points. But I, I believe that he's been pretty good this year. Like he's he's been a lot better than what he what he was in previous. Um and it's he's really starting to get um in sync with the car, I feel. You know, he's it's now He's now comfortable and you can sort of see it in his driving. Um, I think he's, well, he's, from what I've seen, he's, he did all right in practice yes, uh, yesterday, like last night. So um, I think he's going to be the one that's going to, if they're going to stay in fifth, he's going to be the one to do it. To kick on. Yeah. Yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah. Completely agree there. Um, and next up, we are on to McLaren who I will say it's more of a tied. They're in fourth spot, but it, they're tied on points. So I'll, I'll, let, I'll get that one out of the way for you guys as a, a little freebie. But, uh, yeah, McLaren, Jordan, you're up. You've got 130, sorry, 163 points. Um, Danny Rick has 50, which is, you know, pretty good, not bad. And Lando Unoris, so he's in ninth, and Lando Norris has 113 points and is sitting third in the driver's standings, Jordan. Give us your thoughts on all things McLaren so far. Um, I don't know how smug I'm going to come across, um, but I definitely I feel. Voice I, I definitely feel smug, and I feel <laughs> smug. It's it's good. Um, so just to double check, Lando's got double the amount of points. A little bit more than double, truth be told. Oh, brilliant. Even better. Okay. So I just wanted to clarify that one. I, I must have missed that part. But um, So a good year so far, I, I it's going to be hard for, to, for me to say whether it's a positive or a negative so far because their season isn't over. I, I feel that they're in the right spot where they should be at this stage. Uh, and I still feel that, you know, that the – the challenge against Ferrari is definitely not over. And I feel that they're going to fade away is what I'm hoping. Um, and we keep the third po- uh, third position. Um, but Lando Norris, he's done exactly what I've asked for him in the last year. And that was to, you know, really take it to the next level. You know, he's now the most consistent McLaren uh, driver in history, so he, he got was it fifteen race, fourteen races, 
uh, in a finished. row with a point. Yep, with a point, which is the highest in any McLaren driver. So, it's I impressive didn't, given some of the yeah, cars they've had over the years and some of the drivers they've had. Yeah. Hmm. Um, when it comes to Danny Rick, I would say I'm, I'm disappointed with some of the races he has had, but I'm not completely disappointed with him. Um, I feel the I've seen some rumors today, you know, about the rumors that McLaren might swing the accident and, and cut him off, which I think would be a silly decision. Um, I feel you know, you can't give a person half a season and you know, ex- Rome wasn't built in a day essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel it's a bit unjust, but I do feel that you know, he will start feeling a bit of pressure if he. Um, keeps coming, you know, twelfth to fifteenth. Uh, it's just not, it's just not good enough. And for any driver in, you know, Ferrari and McLaren at this stage, you know, you you can't be finishing down there. You need to be finishing in the points. Would you say? Look, I think McLaren are exactly where they probably would would have aimed to be. If anything, they're probably on more points than they would have thought they would have been on at this point. Lando has been like probably besides Max Verstappen, the driver of the season. Like if you dis- if you discount Max, who I think is is at another level, Lando's gone to another level. I think a resurgent Ferrari has been off the back of their. See, it's interesting. I see McLaren has scored a lot of their points off the back of their racing in their on the race day, whereas Ferrari have kind of quali- seemed to be qualifying really well and then just scrambling to get as many points as they can in the race, which I think is really interesting. Norris has been utterly dominant. Ricardo's had certainly some issues with particularly qualifying pace. He seems to be able to get it not – he seems to be able to get it together in the race, but he's qualifying just fucking killing him. Because he's a racer. Is like He's one of those drivers that – you know, has that ability to pass people. Yeah. Which and, not everyone. And he has and he has shown a bit of that. So I think, well, you know, I saw the reports too. I don't think McLaren are going to punt him no. only because they're like, they've signed him to a two-year deal, three-year deal. So they're not. And the compensation on it would be pretty high, so. Yeah. And it McLaren are like, like a, a Zach Brown move. Yeah. It's like they're too well run to do something like that. And I think they're confident that they can turn it around. I think. They're more than confident that they can keep it keep it going. You know what I mean? You, you say that, Josh, right? And you said McLaren are where they would think they should or would like to be with more points. And that's with a with a with a driver supposedly that isn't running to its full potential. Hmm. So like it can't like he can't be that bad considering the team as a whole. That's what, I, I think I think there's a little bit of Ricardo's underperforming, and I think Norris is overperforming, and they're about where they thought they would be if both drivers yeah. were at the level they had kind of expected. So, I think they're confident that they've got a driver lineup to see them into the future. I, I think they're confident that they've got a driver lineup to see them into the future. I think the vibe I'm getting is they don't think they're too far off figuring out what the issue is, Ricardo. Like I think. They, they know what the issue is and they're working on it. I don't think it was like an easy fix though. I think the car was just vastly different coming into it to one that he was used to. And that's not a bad, or, you know, that's not a good or a bad thing. It was just different. And he's just struggled with um, the work on the car. I think they will get there. He showed, he struggled at the first year at Renault, you yeah. know, he struggled at the first year at Renault. And then the second year he got th- uh, two podiums. Like I think, and you got to remember, you know, let me play devil's advocate. Changing three teams in the space of four years is a lot. Like changing four, three very different cars from Red Bull to Renault to McLaren is, you know, that there's going to be some teething issues with bouncing around so many teams. And I think, I hope he just settles down and can turn it around in this back half of the season. We've seen, you know, he's, he's shown on race day he can get enough pace through it. But yeah. I think... Lando has been, Lando has been unreal. Don't like don't get me wrong. He has been cutting it with the big boys this year and has been driving driving the absolute tits off that car. And I, like, I, and I can't you know you can't take that away from him. He's doing a brilliant job. He's getting again. He's doing that whole Verstappen thing of getting more out of the car than we probably expect. Yeah. 
So, so put it put it on the line, lads. Are you going to get third? Yes, no. I think so. I, I, I think I can confidently say we will, only because I think confidently. If, confidently. I, never, I, I, I I'm not saying it confidently in the slightest. I think confidently. I think I think they're a more consistent team than Ferrari. I think McLaren are a more consistent team in the amount of points they're hauling on a weekly average. Ferrari have had a few lucky runs. Um, but I think, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll confidently say that they will get third. Well, it's interesting. So speaking of third and Ferrari, also on 163 points. Well, wait, wait. Do you think they'll get third, Hamish? I think they will, yeah. I think, uh, to be honest, there's a point that Josh brought up is that Ferrari is scrappy, so that and that is a an admirable quality, but it's not something you can bank on. Whereas Lando's shown that that McLaren car, it, given all equal conditions, is the third fastest car on on the grid out of yeah. ten. Like, out of right. ten teams. So that you guys should be third. And at the end of the day, the law of averages pushes like everyone should, in theory, finish where they should be. Like given you know, some no kind of ridiculous outliers like signs of Leclerc, grab a race win, et cetera, et cetera. I think you guys are, uh, have a better car than Ferrari. And I think that Daniel Ricardo, you know, he got, he, yeah, he can only get better from here. Like he's learning every week. I don't see him struggling to the same extent for the entire year. Um, and as you said, like it's a lot of signs and Leclerc just grabbing eighths and sevenths and then all like running in no man's land for fourths. But, you know, that's to me, that's less likely to continue to occur because there's good cars behind them. Yeah. So, so yeah, I do, I do think they'll come third. It'll be, it'll be a great battle. I don't think they're going to like walk it. But I think they will. I think they will end up there. It's it's been the and this is me putting my my support for McLaren behind. It's probably been almost the best race story of the the season for me. You know, don't get me wrong. The Max and Lewis stuff is what we've been wanting, but the battle for third is equally as in like thrilling yeah. in my eyes. Like it's been. I think it's a proper team battle. Like it, a that's product, what I mean. Proper, it's it's Ferrari and McLaren. You know what I mean? Like yeah. and two because it's Marquee so brands. much history. Yeah, yeah, so so much history behind them. And th- between it's good them, for the sport. You know? so, great for the sport. Yeah. Great for the sport. Makes a great well, story. It, Makes some great storylines. You know, it's great matchups all over the field as well, which is uh, yeah. which is exactly what we want to see. So speaking of Ferrari, 163 points as well. Complete kind of opposite in terms of driver points to to McLaren. Um, Signs on eighty three, Leclerc on eighty, which kind of shows you they can they kind of scoring at about the same rate. Uh, that includes a third for Signs, and Leclerc's got a couple of podiums. So, Josh, why don't you lead us off um, in terms of Ferrari and your thoughts on them this season? Well, oh, I would say they're up there with an absolute success story compared to how they went last season. Like, you know, last season was the worst season in Ferrari's history. Like, the awful, awful, awful driving, awful, you know, the team was just imploding internally. Strate- I think, no strategy. No strategy. Stops. I think they've certainly kind of condensed what they're doing and they're, they're qualifying really well. They seem to be qualifying really well and getting up there, their race pace has been, I wouldn't say they've fixed all their strategy issues because their race pace certainly is where they're... Shows otherwise. Like, they're, they're qualifying better than McLaren, I would say, on a, as a team, but then their racing is... They're, they're holding not, on more they're than... Ho- yeah, it's, it's they're getting into a good position and then let's just hold on and get as many points and go for a fifth and a fourth. Like, that's what they're, they're currently doing. I think science has settled in quite well would be what I would say. Yeah. You know, I, like of all the people who have made big moves, I would say he would, he's, he's probably settled in the best and settled in more comfortably and confidently than anyone else, I, I would say. And Leclerc is just, Leclerc has this uncanny ability to somehow wrangle that car into positions that it has no right to be. Like Monaco okay. gets it into first. He's just... And yes, there was God a crash, forbid. all that sort of stuff, but he's somehow figuring out. God forbid he ever gets like a, a title challenging car 
Yeah. Because he'll, he will, he'll, he'll, win, he'll, like, win. he'll win it. Yeah. <laughs> like, he just, he's yeah. a fucking good driver, man. And he's a great driver in a car that's. Do you feel like he's almost gone underrated just because of how poor the like for the Ferrari car has oh, been in the two years he's we, been there? Undoubtedly, Un- undoubtedly, he probably deserves more credit, credit than we give him. Well, we sung his praises last last year for sure. I think we've always been respectful of our like how well he's done. Um, because I think as I think as well, I'd have to agree with you, Josh. Because I think when we all said, now I don't want to speak for everyone, but I think when we said at the start of the year, Ferrari should be back in the fourth, it was more from a they can't be they can't continue to be this bad as opposed to we definitely know that they will get better. Yeah. So you're right. I think they're definitely a, a success story in terms of how how well they've done. Um I think I think that was the good that was a good point there, Hamish, because we didn't know how far like it was how much are they going to improve is going to be defiant, obviously, on where they sit, where they end up sitting. Like they, we could, we, we pretty much said they weren't going to be challenging for world world championships with McLaren and and, and Red Bull as at Mercedes and Red Bull at the moment. Um, getting ahead of myself, yeah, getting <laughs> getting a bit excited, um, but I think this is the best improvement they could have had. This is like, the best case scenario for them. From last year finishing fifth or fifth or sixth or whatever they finished last year yeah. to come up to a, yeah. yeah to to third and like the third fourth battle between McLaren and Ferrari, there's a big gap between fourth and fifth. Like yeah. you know they've they've cemented themselves in that top half. And yes, long term they want to be a team that challenges. They're a team that should challenge for a world title. Like long term, that's what they should be. But you know, they're on the right direction and they've made leaps and bounds returns in that they're fighting with McLaren for those, you know, yeah, they were never gonna jump straight back up. Yeah. It was always um, gonna have to be incremental. And I think for me, and this is the hardest part of it all, is there is actually a Ferrari lineup that I thoroughly enjoy. Yeah. You know, I love Carlos. It's it's, it's, annoying well it's, all around. it's it's been it's been well documented on this podcast that we like the the Spaniard. We like signs and we like Leclerc. We do like Leclerc. Yeah, we, we and, and I think that's the thing is I've never been I've never liked Ferrari. I've never been a Ferrari fan, and I think I think only because my dad used to like how Schumacher was, and I've never I've I was like the anti Hamilton brigade now. You know what I mean? When I was a kid. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So, signs. What, what a what a seamless transition of Ferrari he's had. Mm. Um, I, I don't think that can be overstated. No, um, he's out. Is he got more points than Leclerc? Did you say? Yeah, three, three points. Three more. points more. Wow! Like that's that's seriously impressive, right? And I'm I'm happy for the, for for Carlos. Um, and I and. I think you boys said it perfectly. Like Charles Leclerc, Leclerc in a Ferrari of old would potentially and probably win the world championship for me. Yeah. Oh, if he's if he gets a Ferrari that can challenge Mercedes, if they somehow could like keep start cheating again, he'll, he'll be world champion. Legally cheating. Like if they if they figure out a way to cheat within the rules again, they will be world champions. Like without a doubt. But that'd be a great. That'd be even be a great fight. Leclerc versus Sainz for a world championship. I sign me up. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Absolutely. That's good TV, mate. That's good yeah. TV. Sign me up. Speaking of the world title, a team, the first team that's really challenging for it, and next on our list is Red Bull on two hundred ninety-one points, uh, with Max on one hundred eighty-seven on in second place in the drivers, and Perez on one hundred four. Um. I'll tell you what, if we'd have done this re- mid-season review two weeks earlier, this literally would have been Christian Horner's wet dream, throwing in a donkey and Jerry Halliwell somewhere. Like, this is exactly as good as it could have got. Now, obviously, the last two races, I think they got five points in total or something, which has brought Mercedes back into it, which we've obviously discussed at the time. But they're still in a position. I don't think they've – they've – it's never been mid-season and they've still been in it, I don't think. Well, but in like this period of Mercedes dominance. So 
it only takes another good result. Like it takes a Max win or a Perez win to get the, you know, get them back on the, on the road and back kind of chugging along. I think, as you said, Josh, before Max has probably been the revelation, like he stepped it up again. Um, and he's, and he's clearly rattled Toto and Lewis. Like they, they clearly didn't expect this to be, to be coming from them. And I think Perez got himself a win. You know, he's probably could have done a little bit better, but um, heads up to the news. He signed again. Perez is in. So, you know, doesn't, we don't, we're not for once for a while, we're not going to be going into the late stage of the season with who's going to be the Red Bull second driver. He's clearly exonerated that curse that has been in the, in the Ferrari, sec, uh, the Red Bull second car, got some some Mexican shamans in or whatever they have uh, down in that part of Central America and got rid of them. But did the sacred dancer in the car? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Sacrifice some llamas. I'm not too sure, but he's done it. Um, yeah, I would. Yeah, basically, as near to a perfect first half of the season for them for what they would have hoped as they as they could have got. I think obviously still room to improve. Um. Well, I'll ask the question now, and then I'll go on to what a what a, if you guys have anything to add. Can do you think Red Bull will win it? Yes, no. I'm going to say no, unfortunately, because uh, I am going I'll, to agree with you, Hamish. I'm going to say no. I'm going to break the mold and say, say yes. yes. Yes, I someone reckon, said yes. I'm I wanted to say though. yes so badly. Um, look. I I think there's a bit that needs to be done, and but don't get me wrong, Max has had some bad luck. Like he, you know, to and like anything, bad luck has to finish at some point in time, right? Like you know, it's yeah, but it's, it's going to be too late to take him out. Yeah, constantly. it's you know all those sort of things. But I think he's doing enough that he can cement his spot, and I think Perez is exactly where they want like a first and a fourth gets them a consistent first first and fourths gets them a world title i guess the question is as you said is like if perez can kick clear of bottas cuz basically currently it's max is 8 points behind lewis and perez is 4 points behind bottas yeah. if perez can kick clear of bottas max and lewis are going to score similar points i think that like it could that, be down to a Perez that's, versus that's going to be the defining. I think that's the, the defining final. battle because I think it's, it's going to be very Max and Lewis first and second alternating for the rest of the year, particularly if that continues on. And if Perez can somehow cement his way into third, yeah. like it's, it's on, huge. it's on for all money. But Donkey Perez King. Perez has had a successful season. You can't say that um, well, they finally had, found what they were looking for. That sweet, sweet bloke. They can now. <laughs> they can now turn off the U two song in the background. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. I still, still haven't found <laughs> what I'm, I'm looking, looking for. for. And and Sergio just turns it off. Yeah, but and I think Red Bull think, have found what they're looking for. Yeah, exactly right. It's only taken them. Well, you know what they say, like fifteenth time lucky. Yeah. Um. I think if you if we had done the the preseason, re, sorry, the pre, the mid season review two weeks yeah. before the last of like before the midweek two break, races before it would have been Horner's been sleeping with his helmet marker happy pillow because he would uh, he'd be in his happy his happy or, place um, and. Rightly or wrongly, some people would say that Red Bull do deserve to be first with obviously that Lewis that Lewis incident and then obviously the Bottas yeah. incident. Yeah. The only two reasons Verstappen hasn't won, like finished a race is because he's been taken out by a Mercedes driver. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I think that it's going to – it's going to come down to, the, as you guys said, the Sergio and Bottas battle – but I believe that Bottas will outdo Perez. I do. And I also think that Lewis will still somehow jag it one way or another. Um, but what it wouldn't, like, I'm still undecided whether I feel that 
there's going to be a world championship driver and a different constructors winning it because that could potentially happen. I think it'd be yeah. tasty. It would have been a, a sweet while because Vettel cleaned up all those yeah. Red Bull. It's, it's it been, been a really, really long, long time, time since we've had different. It'd probably be back to did f- I think Ferrari won, won it. it. Hmm? Ferrari it's, yeah, won it. We've, we've spoken about this before. I can't remember exactly which which time it was, but uh, it, it it would have been close to I'd say eight nine years. I'd say yeah, if not more, I'd say more. So speaking of world titles and world champions, Mercedes are sitting top with a three hundred and three points. So that's a 12-point lead over Red Bull. Lewis is in first on 195, and Bottas is on, in fourth on 108, as we mentioned. Jordan, let us know your thoughts on Mercedes so far this season. Mm. Um, so what I would say is Mercedes probably a, a, a little bit com- uncomfortable where they are. They wouldn't have planned for this. This wouldn't have been the season before the changes they had in mind. I think they were sort of hoping that they would cruise to another coast, constructors and coast uh, an, coast another championship. Yeah, and this this wasn't a part of their plans. And I think it's shown that in the way that Toto and Co have almost handled it, handled themselves. Um, you know, Red Bull's always and, been yeah, on their case. Lewis. Yeah, exactly. Like Red Bull's always been on their case, but have never really been able to. It's been like a puppy dog yapping at someone's heels. It's cute. Yeah. And you're like, oh, no, I could be in danger, but I'm not. Whereas now. Exactly. Oh, like, shit. Oh, it's shit. It could, yeah, it could actually bite my fucking hand off here. Yeah. Um, but I think Lulu, as much as people hate him, just has these moments of brilliance and and just championship driver experience that he will just pull something out of his ass and um, drag him out of the, the the problem that they're in. You know, like yeah. he's he he just seems to do it. And the more people whinge and moan about him, the more he seems to do it. So I think I would say this year more than any other year has shown why Lewis is a world champion driver. The like, hate fueled him. Like, it's, but it's, you know, other years where like, oh, he's, you know, just coasting, he's in the best car. But yeah. this year, he's ha- you know, there's been times where he's had to get through the pack and do some things. He's arguably like, not in the best car anymore. Yeah. yeah. And you're like, well, fuck, he's still cutting through the pack and getting past people with just these silky smooth moves. And you're like, well, fuck. Damn, Which, uh, and, son. And you, and you look at the fact that Bottas is fourth, it says it kind of shows the difference in quality, doesn't it? Like, yeah. yeah. Lewis is still first, even though, as we said, they've, they're at least on par, if not the Red Bull's a bit better. But Bottas is now fourth and behind Lando as well. He's not behind the second Red Bull driver. He's behind a McLaren. Yeah. McLaren. So it says a lot. And so that, I think, wraps us up for the, uh, the mid-season review. Um, so do we nothing- feel? Do we feel just quickly? Do we feel that that other than the McLaren and Ferrari switching around, and Josh saying that Red Bull are going to win, do we see any other changes? You know, outside the top four. Look, I I, I think that Aston Alpha Alpine battle could be like it is now. Someone jags a big result. There's rain Mm. somewhere and someone jags a fourth. Like, that could be volatile. I'd like to hope that Williams um, stays in eighth. So anything lower than that, no, that's set in stone, I'd like to think. But I think that seventh, uh, sixth and fifth, I think, will be be a bit tasty. I don't think there's any worry about you losing the eighth, Hamish. Yeah. I I think the... Touching touching anything. Aston are the one who probably have the capability to make changes that can change things yeah, so yeah. like they're the ones that have the capability to somehow cause some havoc in that alpine alpha territory i don't think they will but. i don't think they will but they're the ones that could Good. Yeah. like they're, they're the they're the only team that have the ability that it's under that's drastically underperforming what they're probably capable of 
mm. as I would say. I, I don't think they will because I think there's bigger problems there, but, you know, somehow they can steal some more break ducks or something like that and, you know, they're up challenging for fifths and sixths. Yeah. Absolutely. So jumping into a quick bit of news before we preview the Belgian Grand Prix, um, as we mentioned before, Perez uh, is now staying at Red Bull. Um, Alonso is also staying, so gets another run round, which I guess maybe wasn't as kind of clear cut as uh, as we thought. Um, the Japanese Grand Prix, unfortunately, much like the Australian Grand Prix, is off for another year, um, which is a shame. Um, again, due to COVID, well, more because of the COVID cases there than um, than uh, the quarantine issues that we have in Australia. Um, Drive to Survive, season four, baby. We're back on. I mean, I think that was never in doubt. Anyone? No. no. Making two, far too much money from it, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Two two quick ones I think I'd like to discuss with you guys uh, quickly. First one would be, looks like Red Bull have come out and said that they're basically going to have to have grid penalties towards the end of the year because they've lost, um, they've lost their second power unit in the crashes. In each car, is that a shame? Do you think that could co- possibly cost them in the, the world title? It'd be a shame if that decided it, I, but do you think that could cost them? I think everyone's going to cop them, mate. Yeah? yeah? I don't think they'll be the only ones. And we did discuss it, but, yeah, I think they they do have to come up with a solution for the limits on power units and gearboxes and that that are destroyed due to crashes and whatnot. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I mean, it'd be a shame if that's something that defines the – the, the race to the constructors championship, you know, if it's the, I think that's yeah. It's a, it's good to, from like a budget point of view, and we agree on that. But you don't yeah. want it to be deciding yeah. who wins and who loses. We don't want that to be the difference title. between who wins and loses the world title. Yeah, absolutely. And then second, actually, on that point, Bonotto's come out and suggested that the team at fault for the crash should pay for the crash damage. What do we think about that? Do we like that idea, or is I mean? Look, and then that means that a ruling has to be made on whose fault it is for every incident. Yeah, I, th- I think it, I think it means that there has to be a lot more input and penalties and decisions become a lot more. There's a lot more stakes. Yeah, to who's at fault and whatnot, which I I like the idea of it, but I don't know if it's a feasible solution. Absolutely. Long to, like I don't know if it's a feasible solution to make racing. Does that make racing better? You'd like to think that it kind of evens out in the end. Like you yeah. cause some crashes, you sometimes you're on the end of some crashes. Like I think we don't have that. Nah, nah, it's 50 50. Yeah. Kobayashi's not racing anymore. So I don't think we have to worry about too many always people out. always, yeah, always causing accidents. So absolutely. Well, it's Spa weekend, lads. The Belgian Grand Prix is up with that beautiful Eau Rouge corner. Let's uh, let's do a kind of a quick a quick preview of that. Obviously, there's already been two cr- practices, and um, who? Firstly, McLaren laid on us. What are your what are your hopes and dreams um, from? Did did Danny Rick have all right qualifying pace? Stinkers, yeah, Stinkers, not great, right. not great. Sorry, I don't know. Must must be the beers talking. <laughs> um, what are your hopes and dreams from this weekend? Um, what do you yeah? What are you thinking? Who wants to lead us off? Um, well, I hope it's not – we don't pull out the results that we have in practice, that's for sure. Um, but as, as Josh alluded to in, in the in the McLaren piece, you know, it's the race day that McLaren have been able to sort of find something. Mm. Um, so I, seeing Q2 doesn't really worry me too much. Yeah, um, and you got to remember, sorry. like – Ricardo and Norris have now had a fair amount of running at this circuit. So you've got to think their practice is not so much about pace. It's more about how they're going to run the race. So I'm not yeah. super worried. I think qualifying will be very interesting. Yeah, I can't wait for that. It's yeah. going to be good. Um, I don't think it's going to be – I've got a really bad feeling about this weekend for some reason, and I don't think we're going to do it as well as we are. So I'd be happy with just double points. Just keep doing the double points, man. Are you sure that's not Derby Forest uh, clouding your judgment there, Jordan? It, it, it could quite easily. It could quite easily. Like, it's <laughs> going to be a tough weekend of sport for me, I think. Ever the pessimist. 
That's yeah. It. Um, yeah, I'd have to agree with you, in ter- to be honest, in terms of Williams. I just, I don't think we've ever really had a good record recently at, at Spa. It's a high speed, high power track. And um, yeah, unfortunately, I kind of see us around the 15th, 16th. If we can even nab like an 11th or a 12th, I think that would be a big, um, a big win for us personally. Um, who do you see as uh, winning the race? And who do you see, well, Obviously, we'll get to our prediction soon. But who do you see? Who do you see being a bit of a bolter from um, doing better than maybe someone would expect? I'll go with Alpine. I think they'll have a good weekend. I think yeah. they've got the tail, but um, a oh, bit of a tailwind. Yeah, they've you know chomping the bit to to carry on that famed form that they've seemed to have found. Yeah, I'm, I'm as much as it pains me to say it. I'm probably with Cook on this one. I think. Ocon's on probably for a big weekend. You know, he's carrying a lot of he's carrying a lot of a lot of swagger into it. So I think, you know, one brings two. I think they'll perform well. You've been playing a bit of cricket, Josh. One brings oh, two. You know, one brings two. But I, look, I think over in ones and twos. I think oh. they've got they've got the mix of Ocon, who's on a bit of on a bit of a run of form, and then Alonso, who's someone who's got more experience at this track than arguably anyone else on the grid. And it is a track. It's a high speed track. It's a very technical circuit. I think, you know, that helps. That that makes a big difference. Absolutely. I kind of, for some reason, I can't quite tell you why I've got Aston Martin in my head. I feel like I'm I'm just buying into that Mercedes power unit. Truth be told, but I've got a feeling that they could um hope they could. Uh, I don't say hopefully. Um, I feel got a feeling they could do a bit better than um their previous results has shown. Um, rightio. Prediction game time. Josh, yes. you are currently in third spot. Lay it, lay it on as for your predictions, please. So for qualifying, I'm actually going to go uh, Verstappen, Bottas, Hamilton. Wow. Okay. The lesser seen, the bot ham. Yes. And then uh, for the race, I'm going to go Verstappen, Hamilton, and I'm actually going to go Ocon as like a bit of a curveball to, to get a podium. You really don't want to win this. Make, yeah. Making up like a, someone to come third. Hey, so, um, yeah, you go. Defend yourself. I just, I just, hey, I just think, I think, I think uh, Alpine will kick on a little bit. I think, you know, high speed technical circuit. There's, Look, I'm these, not drinking that much Kool Aid. There's, yeah. there's always a few accidents. In Belgium, uh, at Spa. He finished that so, strong zero. He, he drank, and now yeah, it's, exactly. and now it's on for all money. Look, He's written himself off. That's it. Uh, so I'm assuming your best of the rest is Ocon. Yep. And so who's your bold prediction? What's your bold prediction? Sorry. Well, I think that's pretty fucking bold. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll let him choose another one if he would like to. Say, and I think, like you, I've got an inkling: Aston Martin for a double points finish. Huh. Is that bold enough? I think. I is. mean, off off their current form. Has to mount double points. And who's your fastest lap? I'm going to go Max. I think Max is going to blitz it a little bit and off we'll go. Off we'll go. Lovely. I'm up next um, in second. So for qualifying, I'm going to go Hamilton, Verstappen, Bottas. And in the race, I'm going to go a bit boring, Hamilton, Verstappen, Bottas as well. I think my best of the rest will be Sainz. Uh, I don't quite know why. I was kind of tossing up between him and Lando, but yeah, I think Signs will get the get the chockies. I'm going to say, can I say Gasly in the top five? Is that a bold prediction, or is that? I think that really? yeah, I think that's bold. That re- I think that requires a few DNFs and a bit of wily racing. So I'll give you that. So I'm going to go Gasly top five, and my fastest lap will be Hamilton. Um. Radio, Jordan, lay it on us. I'm going to go Bottas, Verstappen, Hamilton. That's interesting. Bottas, Verstappen, Hamilton. You just said Ocon's coming in third, bro. Like, just let's not throw stones. Um, <laughs> Glass houses the, and all that. Yeah, for the race, I'm going to go Verstappen, Hamilton, Bottas. Yeah. Um. My best of the rest is also going to be signs. Yeah. And my bold prediction 
is Alpine to outscore Ferrari and McLaren. Wow. Ooh, wow. It's a shame we only give two points out for these. <laughs> and fastest lap? Fastest lap will be Verstappen. Verstappen, lovely. In the books, we'll have to hit up uh, reserve driver Ollie, see if he can give us some predictions, which we forgot to do. So quickly, we'll have a Gunter Steiner's quote of the week. You fucking look like rock stars, huh? And now we are a fucking bunch of wanker. Yeah, bunch of fucking clowns here. And so we're just talking about, again, Haas's 2021 performance so far. Doing what we did. Doing what we did. I think we did the best we could up to now. I mean, we knew and we weren't shy telling people already last year it would be a transitional year. I wouldn't even call it a bad year because it isn't a bad year if you know what to expect. Obviously, finishing where we are, finishing is tough every weekend, you know. I'm not sugarcoating that one. But knowing hopefully it would be better next year, that is what keeps everyone in the team going. Yes, on a Saturday and a Sunday night, they are not happy, but they know it will end and they keep their heads up. You know, that's the only thing I can ask these guys for. Just every time we go out with this car, do the best they can because it will be very precious for next year. If you slack off now and say, ah, we were not anywhere anyway, who cares if we are 10, uh, 10 slower or not, but next year a 10 will be a big difference. So everyone is still focused to get the best out of what we have got, and that's the only thing we can do in a moment. <laughs> uh, apparently, uh, when we uh, when we decided what we do, I made so this is him talking to Gene Haas. When we decided what we would do, I made it clear this would happen. And you're telling he told me you weren't wrong, Gunter. That what you told me last year. I mean, I'm doing this for quite a while now, and I would say I could see it coming. So apparently Gene isn't giving him uh, high fives on a Sunday. Poor old Gunter. All right. And unfortunately it falls to me to uh, wrap us up for the week. So that is the checkered flag for another week on the unplanned pit stop. Do you have any more to, to give us on the race, Cook? Hamish unfortunately um, had to drop off as we as we live in this uh, world where he's under the thumb. Exactly. We can now rip into him for the next five minutes without him knowing. Um it's going to be a good race. I'm glad it's back. Uh, Look, long live the F1. Give me your, uh, um, you know, playing off the cuff here, playing, playing unplanned here. Give me your bold prediction for the rest of the season. Give it, to, give it to me. A bold prediction for the rest of the season doesn't have to be anything in particular. You know, I'm, I'm open to it. We're not playing for points for anything, but give me a bold prediction for the rest of the season. We've, we've give every, given everyone a wrap. We've slapped everyone on the wrist who's not performing up to standard. Watch your, uh, watch your, give me, give me one. Lando Norris will come third in the driver's standings. He'll cement his spot, third place. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, that's fair enough. What about fair you, enough. mate? I think Alpine will cement themselves in fifth place, definitively. I, I think you're right on that as well. To be I don't, I don't know if that's Super Bowl, but I think they will define themselves in fifth. Very, I think there will be a gap. I think it'll be first and second, third, fourth, fifth, and then the rest. Well, that's normally think, how standings work. That is normally how standings work, but I think there'll be quite a gap between fifth and sixth. Yeah, agreed. Would be, would be my one. So, uh, yeah, we look forward to it. Racing's back. Racing's back, baby. Let's lead it through. So that's the checkered flag on another week of the Unplanned Pit Stop. Thank you very much for listening. As always, you can find us on the socials at the Unplanned Pit Stop on Facebook, at the Unplanned Pit Stop on Instagram, and at New Pit Stop on Twitter. Give us a like, give us a follow, give us a subscribe. We'll keep doing what we do. Hope to hear from you. That was a nice little poem. There you go. And uh, we'll be back next week to review the Belgian Grand Prix. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. See you then.